Okay, we have audio. Um, we will be starting the stream shortly. Might have made a mistake trying to do what I just did, but hey, that's how you learn, by making mistakes. Well, also by learning. But those are other ways to do it, too. Hello, Kevy. Good to see you. Um, I'm glad that my uh, clever plan to, um, to start the stream a couple of minutes before I actually started the stream uh, it worked. Uh, unfortunately, it also means that I am going to babble incoherently um, while I try to get this working. And that was probably just a really dumb idea on my part. Um, okay, so we're going to go... Yeah, this maybe I shouldn't have shown this screen until we were ready to go. And even then... Um, okay. Oh, you are so s very nice of you, Kevy1, to be there waiting. Um, clearly, I screwed this up. I think I could have done this a little bit better. Um, so maybe next time it'll go better. But probably not. I mean... Okay. All right. Hello and welcome to the stream. Ooh, I forgot I had QGIS running. Um, today we're going to continue with what we were doing last time, which is... Um, we had put the uh, population count uh, data from GPW4, which I think I did uh, I did um, did show over here where we got that data, or maybe I didn't. I don't know. Um, I th I think I did actually, but let's just go back to it really quickly. The gridded population of the world. This gives you the population data for the world, as the name implies. Um, so we took this data, we downloaded it previously and we'd put it into a, a big 8 gigabyte file uh, because for every... Uh, this is this data is approximately every 30 seconds... Oh, shit! I'm sorry! Ah! Uh, thank you! God damn, I'm an idiot. Yeah, I can't see the overlayer here, but of course... So the stream has started now, so if you were... If, you were, if you're on YouTube and you're watching that, you might want to back up a little bit because I started the stream before removing the thing that said the stream will be uh, it's so good to have actual viewers isn't it because if I had if you hadn't mentioned it Kevy that would have stayed on for the whole damn stream um, um, so this is what we were doing we had the data we'd put it into a big file and now we're trying to find a way we then compress the file in a in a uh, squash file system and now we want to make sure we can get the data back out uh, <coughs> excuse me I covered my mouth no COVID for two reasons. One is we want to make, create an API that lets people check the population count at a given point on Earth, and the other is so that we can use our COVID data and uh, and sort of adjust it for population density uh, to see which where where people are being hit the worst, not just because there are more people, but even on a per person basis, a per capita basis. Okay, I think I just explained that pretty well. I keep forgetting the whole point of this is really just for me. So I don't know why I bother. Um, okay. So we had... Um, the, what we'd done was a little bit weird because we'd uh, taken eight separate files, which is how the data comes, smashed them together, but the, the eight files aren't sort of, like, contiguous. They're, like, they're sort of um, tiled... There's, there's a name for it, uh, like what they do with the GIF images. Uh, interlaced, I think, or something like that. Um... So there's three things we need to figure out about where a given piece of data will be. One is the chunk that it'll be in. And previously we'd done this by we'd done this on the last stream. There's a slight problem with this. Uh, and that is we actually want our chunk numbers to be na na numbered 0 through 7. So um, we're going to have to adjust this a little bit. This All we have to really do is put this as a 2. Okay. So what this basically says is that if the... Um, if the longitude is between minus 180 and minus 90, we're looking at chunk 0. Between minus 90 and 0, we're looking at 1. 0 and plus 90, we're looking at 2. And um, plus 90 to plus 180, we're looking at 3. And then we add 4 if we are in the southern hemisphere. Okay. Um, so now we need to figure out where inside of the chunk a given piece of data will be. Each chunk of data 
is 90 degrees longitude and 90 degrees latitude. Um, okay. And now I'm going to do something, let's see. Bitcoin. I don't trust Bitcoin. Um, the problem with Bitcoin is it's worth, I mean, anyone can create their own Bitcoin system. Hello, Natalie. Thank you for s dropping in and saying hello. I really appreciate it. Sleep well. Um, I think the problem with Bitcoin is, I mean, anyone can create their own Bitcoin system. But the original Bitcoin has some value. Um, but the problem is, it, I mean, like all currency, it only has the value we assign it. But there's no uh, national, ooh, ooh. Um, but there's no, like, there's no oversight for the money. I mean, if politi I mean, politicians are terrible people, blah, 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 blah. Uh, this is a very good private system. We definitely need Bitcoin and things like Bitcoin. But the, but the concern is that if all, you know, if, if, the econ if Bitcoin goes down in value, um, no, I guess, I guess politicians could do something. It's, it's just, um, as much as I hate the fact that our currency is backed by our government, that's actually more solid than Bitcoin, which is really just backed by, ooh, dude. Well, wait a minute. Are you just saying that they didn't... You mean one of your own addresses or somebody else's address? Um, because that Bitcoin cannot be gained or lost. Uh, it's always in the block... Oh, well, then you should have gotten... I mean, it's, it's always in the blockchain. The amount of Bitcoin increases as people uh, mine more of it, but it can never fall out of the, of the blockchain. It has a different owner. At some point, if everyone gets rid of Bitcoin, so one guy's going to end up owning it all. But it's still going to be Bitcoin is like Bitcoin is like um, all money. There's a there's a special big word I could use here. Um, ah, fuck. Um, I can't remember what the word is though. Um, money is very different from other goods because you don't you don't consume it. You reuse it. So Bitcoin doesn't get consumed. It just gets moved from person to person. And I think the big word I'm looking for is sopophoric, but I don't think I can spell it, so let me try. Mm. Nope, this is going to be the wrong. Yep, nope, nope, not sophomoric. Sophoporic. God damn it. God damn it. Um, well, that's not good, but someone has it. Um, oh, maybe that's what I meant. Oh, soporific. See, now I just get obsessed with this sort of stuff. Um, no, that's not what I meant. Oh, God. Ugh. Um, wait. How, how does that getting gift cards helping you uh, get your money back? Or is this just a totally different thing? Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm getting obsessed now. I don't even know if we're going to use this... Um, use this big fat word that I don't know, apparently. Hmm... All right. Something that is traded but not consumed. Okay. 
I sell them and it's some kind of exchange. Are you sure you're going to get the gift cards? I mean, that you have to trust that person because... Uh, okay, I'm going to give it a couple more seconds here. Um... Uh, let's see. This is for kids, so I doubt they're going to use a big word. Oh, great, and I forgot that I... Okay, be careful, dude. They could, they could screw you. Um... Oh! Yeah, gold is set to have this property, too. Properties of gold in economics. G2A. Um, okay. This is the last one I'm going to look for to see if it mentions the big fancy word that I'm beginning to think maybe doesn't actually exist. Maybe I just... Uh, um, now, clearly this is going for something stupid. I'm going to put it on my to-do list. Uh, let's take a look at G2A real quickly. Um, oh. Okay, so this looks like it's a site that where, um, where they accept Bitcoin as an alt one of pos different possible currencies. And I'm going to make a note to myself, because I'm annoyed. Because I do want to figure out what the hell that word was. Uh, let's see. And GT... Okay, yeah. So th these are just guys who basically... Um, so are you trying to get your money back somehow? I mean, is, is this that you want to convert it back into cash? Um... Okay... Um, so this, yeah, th they look like they accept li different kinds of money, including Bitcoin. That probably is going to be okay. All right. Good luck. Um, there must be legit sites where you can trade in Bitcoin for cash. Okay. Okay. You can sell gift cards at a premium? I, I don't know. I've seen on eBay that happens sometimes. But usually I would buy a gift card if it costs less than the face value. But I guess I've seen that on eBay for some reason because I, I don't really know why people do it. But Excuse me. Okay. So now... I'm actually going to do something really stupid here. Because latitude and longitude are going to be decimal, uh, but the data we have is is integer, um, okay. Wait, I mean... But I mean, why would people pay more for a gift card than the face value? I don't, I shouldn't ask that though, because I have seen it. Um, and I don't, I don't really understand why, why people do it, but that it does happen. Okay, so I'm going to do something really stupid here. Um, and I do need to mention we're not going to hard code these values. In the data that we have, um, and we can actually look at this here. Um, let's make sure we're, we're connected. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this here. And we have a population. And I think we did this earlier. Um, and we have it in eight sections. But I mean, any of these will do us the right thing that we need to do. OK. And the important thing here is our cell size is this number. Uh, which is 1 120th. Ignore that. That's just a floating point issue. 
So what we can do here is we can multiply um, our um, longitude and latitude by 120, uh, and then we need to round because, uh, and then now we will have a single integer that represents what longitude we're looking for, and of course the same thing for latitude. So now we just have single numbers. Now we can do a little bit better than th th this maybe. Um, I mean, in theory, we could also add to uh, 180 to the longitude, so it's always a positive number, and we could add 90 to the latitude, so it's always a positive number. I don't think we need to do that, though. Okay. Um, so now that breaks our... So now to see what chunk we're in, we actually need to look at... Um, let's see. And I guess... Ooh, this is actually bad. Hang on. Uh, right, because we don't want to actually change the value of longitude and latitude because we're, we're going to be returning this ash. So let's actually say my um, I, my integer longitude, my integer latitude. Okay. And then we need to figure out what chunk it's in. And that's going to be basically... Um, Instead of 90, uh, each of each of these things is going to have 90 times 120, or 10,800. Um, 10 10,800 columns, and I think this actually, because it doesn't change the sign, uh, is correct. Um, yes, I think this is correct. Okay. So now, we need to figure out where, nope, this should be ILNG, and this should be ILAT. Okay, now that should be correct. We're, we're, it's, it's never going to work, but we'll, we're eventually going to have to end up drawing it out. And when we draw it, we're going to see it doesn't look anything like the world, and then we'll have to tweak some stuff until it does. Okay. Where in chunk is data... Um, it's going to be ILAT mod 10,800 will be the, that this is going to be the row, I think, and this is going to be, the column is going to be, um, I think it's just going to be this. Um, because that should be what it is. Okay. Maybe at this point we will print out some, um... Maybe at this point we will print out, uh, a little bit here. Um... Although, honestly, I don't really know if this is going to help any. Uh, chunk row column. It is Pomodoro time, but it is the first one, so we're going to skip it. And let's go over here. Okay. So let's see what this does. Oh, did I do a whole, I did a whole bunch of them, didn't I? Okay. Okay, wait just a second here. Don't want to do the debug here. I do want to do it over here. And, of course, it's still hash long in lat. I didn't change that. I just got that wrong. And then we also need i lat and i long. So let's try that. Okay, 121. Yeah. And I think the big problem here is I have no idea where any of this stuff should be. Um... In other words, it would actually be easier uh, to to go ahead and draw it at this point, or you know, actually give the data uh, instead of instead of trying to guess where the guess w whether these numbers are correct. We can prove that uh, by doing uh, by doing uh, by actually getting the data. 
Okay, so this is going to be the chunk size is um, ten, I think it's ten thousand eight hundred by ten thousand eight hundred. Let me. It's almost def. I think it has to be that actually, uh, because it's an eight gigabyte file. So yeah, so the chunk size is going to be this plus row. And I'm worried that I might be off by one, but we need we can figure that out. Times ten thousand eight hundred plus call. Um, but the whole thing is multiplied by eight because we are uh, we are um, st storing each number as an eight character or uh, sixty four bit number. I think that's right. Yeah. Okay. So now we need to read the byte. Um, well, we need to seek to the byte, and then we need to read to the byte. Um, and I do know how to do that, but I'm lazy, so I'm going to try to see if I can just remember how I did it before. Um, uh, yeah, let me look in um, this guy here. So it is seek set, which means seek set. Oh, actually, shit. There's one more thing. I need, I need to actually open the file. Okay. If file not already open, open it. So unless, what is, this is pop count, right? Yeah. Unless pop count. No, that's not what I want. Um, unless pop count. Open pop count, comma, and I need to fix this path at some point, but for right now it is Whoa, okay. Wait. Oh wow, I didn't remove my temporary files. And that's where it is right now. Oh no no no, it's in the so sorry 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 sorry. I did a squash mount so. Uh, it is going to be in <sighs> Yeah, this is a uh, kind of a pain in the ass here uh, It's in this file here mount pop count um, Okay, I guess I'm still confused by what you mean on that they're stolen, but I assume your plan is to buy gift cards on um, G2A and then sell them on eBay to get your money back. I, I'm guessing. Uh, unless I'm really missing something there. Okay. So now, if I can remember how to freaking seek... And let's see. Pop count. I gotcha. Okay. Pop count, byte, seek, set. And then I need to read, uh, which means I can use either Perl's read function or sysread, but I cannot mix them up because it confuses the hell out of Perl. And so... And this is a little bit of a trick. This is one of the few cases where Perl uh, actually uses a format that C uses, which is um, yet you pass in a variable and it gets assigned. Okay. And so. And I'm pretty sure unpack D is what we discovered was the correct thing to do. Um, okay. This won't work. I mean, this is not going to work even close to be working, but I'm kind of curious to see what the hell um, we get out of it.
Okay, getting nothing out of it is not acceptable. Uh, unpack the data. Data, land use. Yep, I said land use when I meant pop count. That was not, that was not brilliant of me. Okay. Still not getting anything, not cool. Um, I guess one thing to look at is what, what does byte end up being? And I guess the other thing to look at is what is our data? Look at those two things real quick. Okay, the byte numbers look like they are roughly correct. Um, the only thing you can think of is I'm not opening this pop count correctly. Um, that should work actually, but let's see. Um, Um, so if there is an error, Perl puts it into dollar sign bang. So let's see what that does. Let's see if we have an error. Bad file descriptor. Yep, that's an error. Um, okay, so let me see how I do it in the um, in the lib. I could have sworn I had a way of doing uh, checking to see if something was open, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, Aha! Unless minus R land use. That's... That's what I needed to do. Um, now the other problem might be that I don't have access to this, but that's, that's a different, easier to solve problem. Bad file descriptor. Okay, still not cool. Now, of course, over here we could say... Uh, and I'm going to guess this is going to be a permissions error. 93% sure. Yep, permission denied. Okay, so I need to sudo chone minus r user. Now, pop, I don't know if that's actually going to work. I probably need to do that. Except I actually need to be root because... Man... Oh, it is shown user. So why isn't that not working? Okay. Oh, the mount directory might be the wrong permission. Uh, yeah. I think... God damn it. I had this working yesterday. Well, it is readable to the user, so I should be able to, um... I should be able to read the file. I mean, even though I can't do completion on it, you know... <sighs> Function not implemented. Now, this is a, uh, oh shit, hang on. Yeah, I know what's wrong. This was a double-mounted, um... Um... This was a double-mounted, uh... This was mounted on top of another mount. And when the other mount went away... So did this. So, I think that's what's wrong. So now, let me just go over into population... And do... Pseudo, there we go. Still permission denied, but this one I think I can fix now. <sighs> or maybe not. Okay. All right. I'm going to have to go pseudo sue, which I hate doing because it's really ugly. But, okay, so it does exist. Um, I can read it. 
Shamad all plus read x dot dot dot. Oh, it, I could do that to the uh, directory though that it's in. Oh no, that's to the parent directory. Shoot me. Okay. Okay, this looks like it's got permissions are fine. Uh, read, write, everybody. So the only thing I need to do is maybe... Uh, okay, maybe the permission... Nope, this looks fine too. I had this working yesterday without having to do sudo. It's on a double mount, so I mean, it, it kind of makes sense that what's happening here. Um, and it might be that just because of the squash file itself, um, no, the user can read that. Oh, I think I know what's wrong. Um, I think. Uh, when I did squash fuse, I don't need a pseudo there. Okay. Okay. That one I think I can fix. Pseudo chone user mount pop count. Then as user himself. There we go. And now. Booyah. Alright, so now we can get back to what the hell we were doing, which is seeing whether this. Uh, mine. Okay, that th this is actually correct. This there's a lot of minus nine nine nines in there. That is, and these numbers looks. I mean, the ones that aren't minus nine 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 look sort of okay. Um. All right. So now what we're gonna do. Um. I'm gonna first of all I'm gonna save this to Git. And then what we're gonna do. is we're going to make a little mini-map to see whether we've got our orientations correct. And this is going to require a little bit of work here. So we're going to say for... Uh, let's see, we want to go... X, then Y, Y, then X. Yeah, what it's... Um, and I'm almost sure we're going to get this wrong, so don't... Uh, and... Longitude is going to be 360 over 1024 times x plus 180, and that means when x is zero, uh, minus 180. I don't know if I said that wrong. So that means when x is zero, uh, this is minus 180. When x is 1024, this is plus 180. And we're going to say my lat equals pretty much the same thing, um, except it's over 768, and it's minus 90. Times dollar sign y minus 90. And for right now, we're just going to debug this, but we're, we have a plan in mind here. Longitude, latitude, and then, uh, oh, actually. Um, and I just realized we're doing this incorrectly, but that's okay. Because uh, it's actually supposed to return the hash, not not a value. Okay. Okay. Let's see what this does. We're not going to print it out all the way. Uh, but I do want to see whether we're getting something reasonable. Okay. Function not implemented. Okay, what the hell? I don't like that. That's really, really, really strange. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, because that gives you the last error message. It doesn't give you... If there is no error message, it, it's just confusing. Okay. Um, okay, not exactly what I expected. 
Um, so we're getting debugs from this, but not from this guy. Unless something's going wrong. Okay. Oh. Yeah, we don't actually need that anymore. Okay. Oh, and over here we need to be debugging uh, Hashlon Hashlat. And Val. And we do expect a lot of minus 999s initially. That's not a, that's not a huge deal. Um, in fact, we m I hadn't planned it this way, uh, but we could sort minus k n three r this. We could look at the um, the biggest the three mm, n r. Uh, we could look at the biggest values of uh, where the population is densest, and see if that is you know, is where we think the population is den is densest. And by densest, I mean most densely populated, not the stupidest population. Okay, this is taking longer than it should. It's only a million bytes. Shouldn't take you forever to read it. All right, hang on. In fact, let's just do this. All right, let's see what you're doing. 168, 152. I mean, that's going pretty quickly here. Unless at some point it gets screwed over. Okay, it seems to slow down a lot now, which is bad. Okay, it's, it's going okay here. Okay, 110. I'm a little confused as to why it's be being weird. Um, why it, it sort of it sort of had this not interesting. All right, so this we need to sort by. Okay, so according to this, the most populated place in the world is at 120 degrees east longitude and 60 degrees north latitude doesn't sound right. I don't think there's a lot of people living there. Uh, that would put it... Um, and we, could go to, we could use Google to find out. This is too far north for that. Okay. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Um... So broken. Okay. Um, that was a bit ambitious. I'm going to make one correction here. This thing should not be... Um, this thing should not be... It is Pomodoro time. I'm going to take it this time back in two and two.
Okay, we are almost back. And we are back. Okay, that was a little bit too ambitious. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure that our... Uh, that we're translating the latitudes and longitudes to the correct byte, to the correct row column and chunk for that matter. Um, so let's go ahead and... and also this is eventually going to be returned as a hash, but that's probably not important right now. Okay. So we have hash long, hash lat goes to chunk row column goes to byte. Okay. And now we're going to give it some very simple, basic um, latitudes and longitudes to test. Um, in fact, let's actually start with, um, let's start with sort of the most obvious one, which is the one, the top left corner of the world. Um, ooh, no. Yeah, let's do that, actually. Actually, I th already see a problem here. Let's do this. Um, and we're going to get, we're going to do a little bit better than this, but, um, and I guess this really shouldn't be called long lat to byte. It should be called long lat to pop count. Uh, because we're no longer just getting the byte. We're actually getting the value of the byte. Okay. Uh, so if this, this I expect, if this doesn't work, we're really hosed. We have something very seriously wrong with uh, what we're doing. Okay. And that actually was what I expected. So minus 180, zero. And there's no one living there. Um, hmm. Okay, and that is the top left chunk of the um, of the leftmost um, of the top leftmost. Um, chunk of data, which is... Now let's go ahead and check that, actually. Um, let's, let's do... And it's number one here, so we would expect two things. First of all, we would expect the lower left corner of this to be minus 180, zero, and we would expect it to start with minus 999, which I actually happen to know it does that. Minus 180, zero. Okay, good deal. Uh, now, each of these rows is 10,800, and each advance in longitude um, so this is a row of, for one longitude, and then, so if I went to the very highest longitude in this, uh, in this, um, and kept the latitude at zero, I should get the end of this row, uh, which is 10,800 in. So let's do that now. Um, and so we'll go to longitude, which is minus 90, because this only goes from, um, minus 180 to minus 190. So let's do that. Okay, chunk one. Okay, um, slight, slight problem here. Uh, we actually kind of slipped into the next chunk here, which we didn't want, but we can fix that. So we actually want minus 90.0001, so we remain in our chunk. That's not good. Um... Well, let me try this. This will get us not quite to the end of that first row. Okay, here we are, yes. Chunk zero, row zero, but the very, um, the very end of row zero, uh, which is 10, 7, 9, 9. Uh, or, you know, yeah, that's the last, it's the last column in the first row. Um, so now if we were to, um, move the latitude up to 89, we would get very late in this and then leave the, I don't know, leave the, um, Leave the longitude at minus 180 because it's not going to matter, but we should get the very, um, we should get chunk zero, the very last row, or actually it's not the last row, but wait, why isn't it the last row? Oh, because it's 89. If we'd gone to 90, we'd have the last row. Um, and then the, uh, the byte number here would be Yes, that seems correct. It would be 
uh, each column is eight bytes. Each row is eight times ten thousand bytes. Um, ten, th you know, ten thousand eight hundred bytes. So eighty-six thousand four hundred. Uh, and then we have almost every row there. So we have uh, eighty-nine times blah blah blah, hundred twenty rows. That's that's correct. Okay. So I suspect the error might be. Um, might be one of our corner cases. So that's minus 180 and um, 0. That's our first one. And let's go ahead and look at our little cheat pad here. So if we have a longitude of minus 90 and a latitude of 0, we should be just at the beginning of the second chunk. Let's see if that's true. That chunk 1, 0, 0, good deal. And then um, if we move the longitude all the way to 0, we should be uh, at the beginning of the third chunk. Very good. So, so far, so good. Um, hmm. Now, I'm tempted, actually, to not continue with this because I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to recognize what's wrong by the map, which is what I said earlier, and then I abandoned that. And I'm going back to that, because I am very inconsistent. Okay, see what this does. Yep, should be to pop count. And actually, this time, all we have to do here is, if the value is greater than zero, we'll put a dot there, meaning it is a populated place. And the whole point of all this is because we want to do, um, we want to create a fly script. So we can do a very simple, um, uh, so we can do a very simple call, um, I think this is correct. I need, I'll check my syntax here in a sec. So we can get a very simple map of the world that will be red where there is uh, population, uh, black where there's not. It's not going to matter because the only thing we really need is to make sure that our, uh, that our orientations are correct. And it's going to be very obvious, hopefully, if we where we've screwed. We've definitely screwed something up. But hopefully it will be very obvious where we've screwed something up. Um, so let's see. Um... This is a bit dicey. Um, oh, there it is. Ah! I just need one of them. Oh, yeah. I forgot. BCBG, the thing that I used to update my background on the main machine, uh, actually uses the fly script as well. Um, so, yeah. And it's size... Da -da -da. Oh, and it's set pixels what I need. And the reason for that is because... Um, this forces the ba the default color to be black. If we didn't do this, the default color would be the first color that I printed. Um, so here, all we need to do is if val greater than zero, print set pixel um, row column, and we'll use red just to be. And I don't think we even need to put an end into that. Okay. So now, and this is a print, by the way. This is not a. Um, this is not a debug. Okay. So now if we run this thing, we should get... Well, first let's make sure we get something that's kind of reasonable. Uh, new sign, da 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 bunch of... Um, oh, that's right, because we're not printing everything. This is only showing the places where we print. So now we should be able to do this. This is going to be... Fuck. I knew I was... Oh wait, fly command not found. Is it tilde bin fly? Okay, hang on. I could have sworn I installed it here. Uh, root bin fly? That would be a terrible place to put it. I did install fly here, I'm pretty sure. Um... All right, let me go here to Mr. Mr. Rootman. Um, 
Wow. Oh, did I put it in build by mistake? Let's find out. <laughs> okay. Did I just not bother to put it somewhere else? Okay, stand by. I'm going to see what the hell... Well, I should have copied it over to Bin. That's just like the kind of normal thing to do there. Nope. Uh, well, I'd still not done looking, but... That's not cool. Well, maybe it didn't work, so let me let me quickly see that it actually does work. I'm sure I've used it, though. Okay. Huh. Well, that was... I'll copy to tilde bin where I think it belongs. And then... God damn it. Must use new or existing directive. I thought I did, though. New. Size. That should work. Oh. Mm, okay. I'll stop trying to do it so fast. We'll just do this. Um, shouldn't take that long. If I get well, actually, I think I should, I'll be. I can say this now. Nope, but apparently it has to be... Oh, minus I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So something is funky here. Um, the only thing I can think of is I put the new... There can't be a new line above the new, which is what I have here. Anywhere else it should be able to accept that. But anyway. So let's do this. Okay, that looks like it's doing something. I probably should have filtered the output somewhere. And I could have made it quiet, but I didn't. And Viola... Well, I think we kind of see where the problem is. Um, eh, kind of, but there's probably more than one issue here, but, but it's, but I mean, it's, it's, this is really helpful actually, uh, cause what this is telling me, What this is telling me is nothing. No, no. What this is telling me is that I shouldn't have run Fay full screen. Right. Oh wow. Maybe I should have done this. That didn't help me. Okay. I'm going to use XV even though I hate it because it doesn't clutter up everything. Okay, so what this is telling me is that when I'm requesting latitude, okay, okay, after I made, I made a canceling mistake to this mistake. Um, normally when we draw a map of the world, we start with 90 on top and go downwards. So... I probably meant to do this. Uh, and this one, y is 0 is 90, as y becomes 768, becomes minus 90. I don't think that's the only problem, though. But that is one of the problems. So now, now we can just go crazy. Um, pipe to fly, minus q, pipe. I don't know if it, this will work. Yeah, shit. XV does not like, um, won't read from the standard input, but display will. Oh, come on. 
I'm trying to be so freaking clever, and every time it's... So now... Okay. Yep, definitely seeing some issues here. Um, quite a few issues, actually. So... So when I'm asking for nine, this thing up here, uh, latitude 90, uh, longitude minus 180, um, I should be getting something fairly late in the file. Um, but I am not. I am getting... Um, I'm getting something that is actually... Zero, zero. Uh, if I'm doing this, thinking this correctly. And... I don't know what the hell this is. This can't be Australia. No, because Australia is down here. Is this, like, Africa? Oh, this is, yeah, this is part of Africa here. Okay. So that was weird. Okay. Um, I guess what we can have this do here is um, debug what byte we're looking at, at the very least. Uh, oh, actually it is doing that. I mean, it would be if I put debug in front of it. So let's do that. Uh, that was not very pointful. It's going to give us a nice little map again. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, this time we're just going to look at it, the debug output. We're not going to map it. Okay, what are we doing wrong here? So, minus 179... Okay, so maybe I'm reading that file wrong. Huh. Well, let's take a look at the file again. Maybe I misunderstood how it is... <coughs> it is orientated. Wait, is there a zero? No. Let's see if that's that's the case. We're screwed. Pomodoro time. We'll be back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. And I think I figured it out. Even though this is the lower left corner, I think the Y values start at plus 90 and go down. They don't start at zero and go up. 
Um, I think there's other issues here, but let's let's go ahead and do that one. Um, so this um, mod ten thousand eight hundred. So I think it's going to be. I think that's going to help a lot. Um, but actually, I should probably do it up here. No, 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 wait. Eh. I'll do it here, but I mean, really, because that is the row it's in. So let's see what this does. Oh, come on. I've got too many of these damn things open. Let me get out of some of them. Uh, before... Okay. Oops. Hang on. Okay, crap. I was going to turn off debug for that so we didn't have to look at all this stuff flying by. It's not harmful, but it's not meaningful to us. So this should at least fix the flip error. Uh, but I'm fairly sure that's not the only mistake. There, there's something else going on here. Oh. Well, damn. Now, there is this little thin line here that I don't like. That's the equator, but I mean, uh, I don't like it. I don't not like it for being the equator. Um, I don't like it because it shouldn't be showing. It should be giving us values here, not zeros. Um, um, so maybe this just isn't very populated? I mean, it's like we're off by a little tiny bit. And are we going from minus 90 to 90 in terms of um, rows in, in this way here? Okay. Um, hash, lon, hash, da, 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 da. Uh, So we start at... 90 and work our way down. Huh. That's kind of weird. That's... I'm not quite following... I mean, everything looks beautiful here. But there's no pop. Oh, actually, that might there might be population there. Um, this is a cylindrical map, not a Mercator map. Um, uh, I get the feeling I'm off by a very tiny amount here, and I don't know what that amount is, because this this is a very square chunk here that I'm pretty sure shouldn't be there. Uh, and these are some really square-looking chunks here that I think there's something wrong with. Um, I mean, th there is some ocean in this area, but I mean, that's that's Egypt, I think. So I think somehow we're crossing the boundaries into different chunks, not incorrectly. Um... Hmm. Or maybe this number's wrong here. This should be 10,800 squared. Which I think it is. Yeah. In fact, I should probably write it like that. Hmm. Okay. I guess the other thing I could do here is I could also be, um, instead of just printing white or, wait a minute, oh it is white, uh, I could print a little bit based on the color, um, 
So let me do that. I mean, this is getting... I'm going to go ahead and save this to get first. Because we're really close now. And what we can do here is... Um, If val is greater than 1, we could print it in a hot red. So let's do this. Uh, else if, else if it's greater than 0, we can, um, we can print it in pink. Now that seems like it's a better color. Ah, what the hell. We could also just print a black pixel or something here, but it's not... We don't really need to do that. Okay, so now let's see if this gives us some... A little bit of what we expect. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, we can start going into areas that are... That are ooh, shiny. Okay, that's not super useful. The red is presumably where there's more population. But I think I just kind of screwed that up. Um, I think maybe we want to say if Val is greater than 5, do that. And let's see what's going on here. I mean, kinda. Yeah, maybe... Greater than 10? I, I realize we're wasting time at this point. We There are much better ways to debug this. I'm just not gonna do them. Uh, I'm trying to see if we can get like the metropolitan areas really highlighted. Um, it's getting closer. Um, yeah, I think this is actually... With the exception of right here where there's something wrong, and right here where there's something wrong, I think this is actually pretty good. Um... Don't, is that Greenland? I mean, um, now we could just try mapping the United States. I see, I just don't see these areas as being that densely populated. But I mean, clearly, this has nailed something. Um. And this worries me. The fact that it's so chunky. Um, I don't know. This could be accurate. This might not be accurate. Um, there appears to be a very harsh cutoff here at some some number. So let's actually do this. If val is neg if it's the missing value, let's be really specific and print um, blue. It's not really ocean, but it's uh, x y zero two fifty five, and then. Uh, else, if we'll print it at hard red. Else, if it's bigger than zero, but n not bigger than... Although, at this point, everything should be bigger than zero. Um, we'll print it in a fainter shade of red. All right. At least this should tell us where our sort of our cutoffs are.
and this is not a Mercator map, so it is going to look a little bit strange. Oh, wow. That's almost resolved the whole problem. Because it does show that uh, this is Greenland. That's Baffinite. Why are there so many people living there? Dumbasses. Um, this is beginning to look a lot more like the uh, the map we expect. Um, except I'm suspicious of people living there. I mean, I'm suspicious that there are people living there. I'm not suspicious of them, per se. Um, this is this is looking pretty good. I mean. If there is an error here, what the hell is... Are these the Faroe Islands? Um... Hmm... I mean, we could go with more shades of red here. Um... So that is going to be blue, but, um... So we could say the shade is equal to the value, and we're going to ignore the special case where uh, the value is negative 999. Um, I don't know what the maximum value here is, so I'm going to say like 32 maybe? Um, and then, so that's going to give us a, a number that we're going to force to be between 0 and 1 times 255 divided by 16. What the hell am I doing? Um, times 16. Okay. So this number should be, if this is 32, this will be 255 over 16 times 255. So this is going to basically give us the um, 16 different shades of red. Um, and I think there's no way this can be less than zero. Um, yeah, because this is zero, this is still going to be, okay. But it could be greater than, we can just set that to 255. Okay, so we're going to do this, do this. Um, do this, oops, nope, not that, this, this, and so it's going to be if, then print this, else, print, set pixel, x, y, shade, zero, zero, and let's see what that does. I don't think that's going to work. I think we're going to get an error message. I will be surprised if this works, and if it does work, I'm going to save it to you. Oh wow, that area actually cleared up now that we, we did this. This is kind of funky. I like this. I think this is actually pretty accurate. We, we, we need to tone it down a little bit, but let me go ahead and save this to get. Okay, so let's tone this down a little bit. Let's have the shades. So um, we'll divide by 64. Let's see what that does for us. This, this is not bad. This is We're getting a pretty good idea of population count uh, per chunk. Damn. I mean, this is just nailing us here over in India and, well, the Indian area. Now, the other thing we actually want here, this is population count, but not density. And these squares near the equator are bigger because one half degree of longitude, uh, one half, rather, uh, minute of longitude is, is wider at the equator than it is up here. So this is actually not a great uh, thing to look at, although it is, it is really useful. Um, 
and it's really fun to look at. One more. I'm going to go one more. 128. I'm, I'm trying to make it so the metropolitan areas shine out very distinctly from uh, the non-metropolitan areas. And I did not succeed in doing that. And when I said one more, I meant two more. All right, let's see what this does. Wow. Okay, we are getting some, 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 s s because these uh, ones are bigger here, we are getting some size issues. Okay, but I'm fairly happy this is doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, it is returning the population count um, from a longitude and latitude. And it's not doing the right thing because it's not returning it correctly, but that's an extremely minor issue. And we could probably clean this up a little bit. Um, so the next thing we want to do is actually look at population density. Um, I think. Um... Yes, maybe, maybe not, no. Uh, actually, it's a good question. I don't know if we want to look at it or not. Um, so let's actually go ahead and look at what we wanted to look at earlier, uh, which was the locations of the COVID deaths. And before I forget, I'm going to pull both of them. Uh, the lowercase one which is a translation of the uppercase one. So we'll do that. No, 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 no. Okay. And we'll do that. And I think we determined um, that the data we, wa we wanted uh, was under daily data, but there was a problem with this. In the more recent uh, versions, um, we have all the data we need, which is uh, uh, FIPS, admin to province, da 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 da, um, latitude and longitude, which is the, the, the key things that we need, uh, because that's how we're going to determine uh, the population density. Um, and number of deaths. Okay, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are almost back. And still almost back. I'm going to double check to make sure everything's going okay on my stream in the sense that no one's watching it. Okay. Um, so we have these daily reports. Some of them have lat lawn, some don't. We can figure out which ones by using the lovely uh, grep minus L feature. 
Okay, so it looks like since March 22nd, uh, we have reports with longitude and latitude. What does it look like for March 21st? Oh, we still have latitude and longitude. Why did they change the format? Uh, but okay, we still have it. So that's good. Um... All right, let's see how often we have it in that form. Latitude, longitude. Okay, that goes back to the 1st of March. So now let's see, this is this is wonderfully... Okay, and before the 29th, we do not have... Um, we don't have latitudes and longitudes in either of those formats. Unless they put it there for something even older. Um... Now you would hope someone has fixed this data. Um, you would hope that someone has fixed this data so that we would have longitudes and latitudes for everything. Um, let's see. Let's see if their time series, I don't think their time series is gonna have um, latitude and longitude, unfortunately. Oh, I'm wrong. Latitude, longitude, but it, will this have it for, it does. Oh, this is gorgeous. Well, that's where the data is. Um, yeah. So right, well, right now we're just looking for a sum, but I mean, that's still really nice. Um, so this tells us what the total counts are. Oh, actually, these are the cumulatives, so we can actually just use the last number here. That's really nice. Um, and then find the population count. Um, and then... The only problem here is that I think maybe the latitude and longitude will be so finely defined that, um, because we're looking at one one hundred twentieth of a degree. And when they say American Samoa, well, when they say, like, for example, Guam, hmm, actually that's a good question. I mean, these cities are pretty tight, but they're still bigger than one kilometer. Um... This is not bad. Um, and, oh, this was, yeah. So the, for the global, if they have the same data, that'll be fantastic. And they do. Now the question is, will the global go into uh, specifics in America? And it does not. Alabama. But that's not bad, though. Okay. Confirmed U.S. Oh, yeah. Oh, these are counties, but that's still pretty good. Um, yeah, my, my big concern here is uh, we're taking point population counts, uh, but we actually need, like, county... Uh, population counts. Uh, not, um, which we probably have somewhere. Um, probably on geo names now that I think about it. Um, let's see. Oops. Um, and there are exceptions. Not every place in the United States is broken into counties. Virginia, for example, is not. Um, the Commonwealth of Virginia. And a couple of other states have a couple of independent cities, but this might be enough to, um, yeah, this might be enough to, to do what we need. Okay. Um, so the, uh, the finding the population count was a total uh, waste of time because we're not going to use it. 
Uh, instead, we want to look at the um, we want to look at the population counts of the various counties, so we can get sort of an idea of which counties are most affected. Um, and now I get the feeling that we can. Do I miss running QGIS? I am. I need to stop that. It's way too way too heavy. Um, and now I get the feeling we can actually do that in now if I do this um, COVID by county I I think we nailed it yep so it looks like we did a lot of work for nothing which is good um, uh, let's see close this off okay they're not giving it to us necessarily by Okay, so this is by county. Uh, they're not giving it to us by density, though. Um, let's see if there's an adjusted for population. Per capita? Aha! Per capita. But that still just gives us... There we are. I wish they would color it this way. Um, um, but maybe we can get their data and, and fuck with them. Okay. There is a really nice map making site that lets you, gives you free data on all sorts of stuff. Um, and I've never used it because I prefer to use my own data, but I'm now thinking that maybe it would be useful to use them. Um, because what we want is a map that they have not yet provided. Um, which is COVID by county per capita, which is not the correct word for this. Um... County by county map of COVID-19. Map reveals hidden hotspots, which is probably garbage, but... Um, aha! Okay, that's good. That's very, very good. This is getting much closer to what we want. Except for the fact that you really... This all glues together because the borderlines are kind of merged. But anyway. Um... Okay... Um, so we have fairly high, uh, high, uh, corona there. East coast. West coast not very densely populated at all. Um, can we sort by this column? Okay. Hello, Milkister Moo! Go Colorado! I missed it, but let's see what, why we want to say go Colorado. Um, I think even New Mexico did, though, didn't have a lot of... Um, okay, so now I have no way of... Ah, uh, god damn it. La 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 la, I'm an idiot. Okay. Yeah, Colorado's looking not too bad. Colorado's doing okay there. In fact, it's emptier than New Mexico. All right, you people need to get some COVID here to make us look good. Go to Mexico. Um, actually, if you look, um, I don't know how long you've been watching the stream, uh, but actually the county data I, you know, I actually downloaded, uh, but then I realized that uh, someone's probably already done the uh, per, well, you know, the per capita uh, infection rate per county. I don't think there is a one per uh, city or location, um, but county's not bad, actually. Counties are pretty small. Um, I'm going to have to shrink this sucker down, I think, because we're just getting a little bit crazy here. Okay, so deaths per... This should be sortable. Okay, and so we have here New York, New Orleans, Detroit, Boston... Um, 
And I don't actually know where um, Albuquerque would be on this list. Denver Aurora is there, but I mean, uh, that does not look like a correct sorting, though. There we go. Um, so New York, New York, has, and Newark, uh, which are two separate cities, um, have really been hitting it. For some reason, that area of where New York and New Jersey are, are mangled together, and I guess Connecticut and Pennsylvania, too, if you want to be pedantic. New Orleans, Detroit, Hartford. Um, not really seeing a commonality between these cities. Denver Aurora is um, eight point. That's actually pretty low. Um, but if you actually want to see how the states are doing individually, that's that's actually we can go here. First of all, we're going to do a reload so we can get the biggest numbers. Um, except this is, but this the problem is this is per capita though. This is adjusted for for population. So why are people in New York? I mean, yes, obviously there's more people in New York, but why are they getting corona and dying from it at a higher rate? Um, and you could make the argument um, that the more people that meet, uh, the, the more likely the virus will be. So it's actually proportional to x squared, the square of the density, not the density. Um, yeah, and I think just because people live so close together... Uh, is uh, right is dense basically with um, I I don't know that that's a guess so 2.4 uh, cases the number of deaths seems to have sort of like kind of fizzled out but um, yeah I mean but anyway um, first let's do it per country and we will do I think the only statistic that's the probably the most important statistic. Uh, is deaths per one million only because I don't think we've tested enough to really know who has the most cases. Uh, that could just be an artifact of how many people we've tested. So the uh, highest deaths per population is San Marino, um, which is a tiny little country. And then we have um, Belgium, fairly small, Andorra, France. United Kingdom, surprisingly high there. Sweden... Whoa, you mean by, like, um, oh, I see what you're saying. Um, hang on. I don't think this page has it, though. Let me go back over here. Uh, oh, well, this is this. Um. Oh, God. This is still cities. Um, I know what you're saying. Counties over here, but this is actually by what, are, what they call combined statistical areas. Let me see if they have... Um, so this is county by county, so that's it. That's, but they don't have a way of ranking these, if that's what you mean. Uh, I mean, we could. We could do that ourselves. Um, now, the question is, will they let you download this data? Nope. Um, although I'm guessing if we really wanted to, I mean, clearly the data is here somewhere. Uh, if we did a view source, uh, somewhere in one of these included files, they have the data, if we really wanted it. Um... Somewhere there, let's see. Data. John Hopkins University. So we have that data too. Um, oh, uh, what I was trying to do originally is just see, uh, instead of showing these maps that show total number of cases, which makes California and other high population areas look bad, I wanted to adjust 
to the deepest level possible based on population density. So this is pretty much what I wanted. This right here is pretty much what I wanted, except <coughs> it'd be really nice if we could, oh, download. Oh, cool. Well, that was easy. That was too easy. All right, so let's see what that data just gave us. Um, these are ordered in reverse county order, so we're not quite ready there, but um, positive per 100K is the last item. So that's just sort minus K. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's see if what this does, and I guess we need to put a give it a file name. And this is it. This is the whole thing we needed all along, if this works. Um I'm off by something, aren't I? I miscounted something. Or am I using the wrong... I think minus T is how you change the field separator, yeah. Um, so what have I accidentally um, sorted by? I think I've sorted by the longitude. Let me look at the uh, headers again. One, two, oh, but the date here is going to mess this up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's try that again. There we go. So Marion County in Ohio has, wow. That's just weird. Um, yeah, well I've got this sorted correctly. So why the hell is Marion County in Ohio? Let's take a let's see if we can get um, some news stories on that. I am not gonna do Pomodoro because our good friend Milkister Moo is here. Um. Let's see if that is, if this is correct, we're going to have a, um, um, ah, because they imprison people and they fuck them over. Wait, I think I mean, do I, I met Marion County, Ohio, didn't I? Yeah. Not Marion County, Florida. Okay. Yep. Yep. So that that kind of makes sense. Um, Rockland, which now uh, I'm going to check my county, Bernalillo. Eight hundred eighty-two out of two seven four two. So not great, but not terrible either. Um, and I'm, I don't know if they actually are giving ones that have zero. Oh, they are. Okay, cool. Oh, and they have unassigned, so this isn't quite 100% accurate. Um, yeah. The worst Colorado County is Eagle, and it's up there. I don't know what you're doing in Eagle County, um, but you know. Gunnison, Morgan, Hinsdale, Pitkin, okay. Um, so basically, um, I wasted a lot of time, but I, that was it was worthwhile nonetheless. Um, 
to create a map of population density or to have the ability to do that uh, and then we had a um, to find out which areas had the most infections per 100,000 people. Uh, now we're going to go back over here for the states as individual states uh, and if we click on US which does not have anywhere near the highest number uh, and then we can go to states and I got I wish I had my ad blocker here um okay so I think New York is gonna unquestion New York New Jersey are getting hit really hard um, and then from then on Colorado's up there New Mexico I think is really low New Hampshire yeah New Mexico's down there and um, the Virgin Islands. So if you're a virgin, you're very safe. Puerto Rico, if you're Mexican, that's an insult. Spanish, Hispanic. Northern Mariana Islands. I, no one lives there, though. Um, this is sort of interesting that the state that has the lowest per million, by the way, their per million number is higher than the actual number because Wyoming has fewer than a million people, which is just kind of funky. Um, um, also seem to be the states that are the least population, which suggests uh, that density has an issue as well. Because, I mean, the w lower ones here, Hawaii is not that, not that non-dense, but, you know, Alaska, North Dakota, West Virginia, fairly sparsely populated areas are, are being on the lower part of the chain. Let's see. Uh, no, no, I do not. That is... This is really, really hard to begin with. Um, second of all, we can't even really treat the states as individual entities because they're made up of counties, they're made up of cities, they're made up of individual people, they're made up of neighborhoods. Um, different areas of the different cities are differently densely populated, faith and doctors. Honestly, um, I mean, we have to be really careful here because this, this is like a pet peeve of mine. I don't think we could actually predict how many people are going to die in any given area or even in the world. So I don't believe in predictive statistics. However, just for fun, we could come up with a very accurate mathematical model, but that would simply be because if you have any finite amount of data, you can always curve fit it so it looks like your curve fits really well, but the curve will have no predictive value. So. So probably no. Uh, I mean, we could come up with curve fitting that matches, but that would only tell us that we have a curve that matches. It wouldn't tell us, you know, w it wouldn't give us the difference between good and evil, I don't think. I mean, you might want to try it. I'm, I'm just saying I don't think we could do it. Um, it's a very difficult question. Um, plus, I mean, there, there's probably people who have, like, natural immunity or people who have gotten, gotten over it, have antibodies. We have to take that into account. Um, I do know that the testing is a really bad thing to look at uh, because uh, we're only right now testing, mostly only testing people uh, who are having serious symptoms. Uh, so that is not an accurate um, reflection of how many people actually are infected. So... Um, okay. All right, milk is removed. If you want to do something, let me know. Uh, it's it's all you. It's all you now. And if you don't, uh, I have been streaming for close to two hours, so I think I will call it. I uh, still think this was worthwhile um, because for our data server, this will become uh, important um, later on. But but not for what we were doing it for. All right, thank you for watching, and goodbye, everyone.